Well, good morning. Welcome to another episode of Papa's Workshop. These are for Adam, Brady, Luke, and Brenna. And before we get started today, let's talk about, uh, let's check in with my assistant. There's my mommy. What you doing, girl? You guarding the door? No, no food. No food. Yes, my good girl. He's working hard. Let's get to work, girl. Okay, today's episode, we're going to start a new project. Uh, this is going to be kind of a different uh, uh, project. This is, we're going to make a porch swing to go out in the backyard. Um, and so instead of drawing a plan up, I've just got a, just made a sketch and a materials list. Since there's so many, uh, since the curves in that really drawing it out doesn't help me. I need to actually make a sample and see if it's gonna be comfortable. So that's what I did is the first thing is I made a little mock-up out of some scraps. And so I set that on a stool and sat down in it and played with the curves and the angle. And this seems to be pretty comfortable like this. So we'll probably change these. Won't be quite so close together and these won't be quite so far apart. We'll kind of played with which ones felt better. So um, I'm going to use, take this apart and use the, use these as my pattern for the curve. And I'm going to have, we need four, four sets of these two pieces. Um, so we got to make these all identical. And what we're going to do, I think, is... Um, <coughs> This joint here, which I've just temporarily put together, will make this a lap joint. Which a lap joint means that um, we're going to cut half of the material away on one board and, and, and half on the other two. And they'll fit together and be one thickness all the way, all the way through. And then, so then the, this lip of the one will be on that stop so that'll give us some leverage and then maybe we'll put a either some screws in it or uh, maybe it's some dowels uh, to keep it from from turning and then we got to use this is going to be outside so we have to use uh, waterproof glue so we'll probably be using a polyurethane glue for that and we're going to use white oak uh, white oak is pretty resistant to rot uh, and it's inexpensive. Um, teak's probably the best, but it's very expensive. Um, so we're going to go with white oak. And white oak is different than the red oak. Um, the red oak is you can you can get at most of the box stores and stuff. And it does have a slightly red tint to it. The white oak doesn't, of course. Um, but like I said, it, it's also it's it's a little denser, and it it does a lot better in the outdoors than the red oak does. So, um, so first thing I got to do is take this apart and uh, make some templates for the curves, and which includes the joinery because we're ha going to have to do the joinery, which is that that lap joint. We're going to have to do that first while the stock is square. All right, once we put the curves and stuff in this, it gets hard to handle. So we you do the joinery, if you can, you do the joinery first. And then you go ahead and start cutting the curves and, and shaping things. So, so let's get started. Okay, I got everything apart and I made new templates. So here's our, our pieces that we had. Uh, and so I made two templates, one for the seat and one for the back. And you can see I marked where the lap joint's going to be in the size of it. So these two will just overlap like that. Uh, and this is about 18 degrees from 90, this, this part right here. Uh, 
so I can be consistent. Um, and so what I did was I, I transferred from the uh, prototype on here, cut that out on a bandsaw, and then uh, straightened it with, uh, smoothed it out with sandpaper. And I see right here I got a little bump that I missed. Anyway, so you sh your fingers are surprisingly good at, at just like this. And see right there, I can just feel it now, is right there. Uh, but you're surprised. You'd be surprised. You can feel a bump on the, in a curve like that uh, better than you can just looking at it. Uh, and that one's good. So, so the next step is to get my stock milled. I got to do the joiner, get one surface flat, planer, get the other surface parallel, joiner to make one edge straight and 90, cut it. I don't really have to cut it to width because I only need one reference edge straight. Uh, and then even as long as it's longer than my blank, I don't need to really cut it to, to length. So I got to do that on all the stock and then we'll transfer these patterns to it. And then we'll have to cut the lap joint on each one of them. So before we do the curves. Alrighty, we got all of our stock all cut and milled. It's all flat, parallel, so on and so forth. But I did find that I had to make the two sides parallel. And the reason for that is I have to cut this, cut this off at this 18 degrees and then the lap joint. And the only way to do that on my left hand sled is to have the the top. So that's why you do this while the stock is still straight. So uh, what I'm going to do first is cut them all off to a known length. Uh, so I'm taking my shortest piece for the each, they're, they're slightly different length, the seed in the back, but I take the shortest one for each stack and I'm going to cut that uh, 18 degree off. Then I'll have them all a known length and I can use my stop to uh, inch towards my uh, lap joint. We'll do that with a dado blade. But first I'm going to use this, this cut off cross cut blade and cut the pieces off there. And I may come back and score where that is, but we'll, we'll see. Right now I need to just cut these all off uh, at that one point. Alrighty, so I got them all, all cut off, uh, both the seat and the back. So now we're gonna. I got the dado blade set up, and I got the the uh, the thickness set right. Or it's pretty close. I have to actually. I didn't tested it, but well, it could go a titch more. Um, so <clears throat> I make the pass on there and got that step. So then I'll move it in. The dado blade's about three quarters of an inch wide. So I move it in about three quarter with a stop and do it again until I get up to my mark. Which is what I marked one of them. So when I get there, I'll stop. And then I have to do the same thing, reset everything for the back. Um, and then we'll be set. So let me just bump that up another little bit. It isn't much. Try that, and uh, we ready to roll.
All right, we got uh, one half of the lap joint done, see? So I don't have the backs done yet, there's just the seats, but you get the idea, this, this fits right in there and see, and it's, it's flush. So we'll get the, uh, the backs done the same way and uh, we'll be ready to cut a shape out. Okay, all of the half laps are cut on, uh, on both pieces. So the next, uh, the next piece to, to do is to transfer the pattern onto the piece. Now it's, it's, it's important that it be oriented right, of course, but, but it's got, it's got to be, you know, flat on this surface. And if you're doing it laying down, it's easy to get this turned. And if any one of them gets turned, then when we put the slats on, it's, it's going to be, going to be crooked. So, um, and this is going to be especially important when we, uh, put these on with double-sided tape to do the router. So right now we're just doing the lines um, so that we can cut it out on the bandsaw or cut it close with the bandsaw. So what I do is I, I, I'm i just standing, letting gravity keep both of these on this surface. And then I'm pushing up against a known stop, even though there's a, an angle on this end, uh, it, it, it's going to hit it at the same place because this is a square piece so so now I can I can go ahead and draw the pattern and that's it'll be consistent on all four pieces so I do that on all four seat pieces and and the four back pieces uh, before I cut it out on the bandsaw I'm going to uh, there has to be a <clears throat> this has to be cut to three inches this just this part right here so I'm gonna on the table saw that way I know it's good good and straight and uh, smooth uh, so I'll cut that on on the late pieces on the uh, the backs let's see on this on the seat <coughs> I can cut straight and this is all waste this is all gonna be just trash so I can cut straight but on the on the the backs I've got, I've got this material up here. Only this part is waste, so I'm going to have to be careful and stop up in here before I cut into this curve. So that's the only thing. So I'm going to do that on the table saw, and then uh, cut close to the line on the band saw, and then we'll be uh, ready to put the templates on for the uh, routing. Okay, we got all of our uh, pieces cut to the rough shape. Uh, so now we're going to tape the template down onto the blank so that we can route it. I'm going to put this router bit in the router table. It has a bearing on the top, so that will ride on the pattern and then it will cut based on the, the the cutters are are even with the bearing so I'm gonna tape that on this side of the blank so that I can reduce my tear out um, the patterns gonna be on top and so the cutter is is going this way see the, the the cutting edges so it's it's going this way in a router table um, so here I'm going down and if there's any tear out it, it goes out this way right so uh, this will all be nice and smooth uh, but I do have a little bit here 
that it's going to be trying to, to pull that up and, and the, see the, the, the grain is going down this way. So I can try to go the wrong way and, and trim that, uh, try to get it as smooth. So far this stuff's been pretty, uh, tears out pretty good, so I'll have to watch that. The, the seat part, that was the back, the seat, there's really no good way. Uh, you've got, it's downhill here, going this, this way, but it's, you know, you got to go the opposite way for this side and for this side, so not sure what we'll do for that one. We'll do the, the backs first. And I just use this double-sided tape. Um, I think it's carpet tape. I think you can get at sporting goods stores. You can get uh, stuff for golf clubs. Double-sided tape. Um, we just need to get down. It doesn't take a lot. I get the my assistant can sweep the floor later. Although she's really not very good at that. She kind of sweeps it with her tail. But it kind of goes everywhere. I can't get this one up. There we are. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to let gravity get the two pieces equal. And I'm up against my stop. Same thing, and then I'm just going to press them together. So at least this is nice and level there. And so now I just need to put the router table and just go along there like that. So that's next. Okay, so we got that all routed and it's, it's all perfectly smooth. So now we got to get this off of there. And, uh, it's a matter of slipping a putty knife in there, and then usually they'll come come apart pretty easily. They won't slide, but going this way, they they come apart. It's just a matter of doing that. So all we have to do is do that on the rest of the parts, and. Then we'll be ready for the next step, which I have to figure out. I'm kind of designing this on the fly, so which isn't usually what I do, but since we kind of have to size things based on the, uh, you know, what it feels like. But anyway, so this is where it's going to, we put the lap joint together. It's going to be like that. So. And uh, it came out pretty smooth. We'll have to do a little bit of sanding, but uh, there we have it. So let me go do the rest of these. Well, all right, we're ready for the next step. We got the all of the backs routed and the seat bottoms. Lap joint is done. Uh, before I go any farther, I'm going to... Uh, cut the slats. Uh, so I got two boards here. They're uh, about eight and three quarters wide. Just a little, little too wide for the joiner. Uh, so I ran them through the planer. They were pretty, pretty flat, pretty straight. So I ran them just through the planer enough to get them uh, parallel. And then I'm going to cut these. Uh, oh, I did. I uh, jointed one edge to get that at 90 and I use that as my reference edge and I'll cut uh, cut thin strips about three eighths of an inch thick uh, strips out of this uh, so I'm thinking I need about 30 
30 or 32 slats. Um, just just a rough guesstimate. I kind of have to see what they are. This is they're about seven eighths thick. Uh, the, or so the slats would be seven eighths wide. The board seven eighths thick. So we'll see. Uh, I should be able to get uh, 16, uh, 16 and 18 good ones out of this. You see, the I'm going to have some bad ones. This board looks okay on this side, but I got a knot on this side. So the strip through there, maybe two strips through there, uh, aren't going to be any good to me. And I got the same thing on the other half of this board. This was all one long board. So. We'll see how many slats we get out of it, and then we'll kind of go from there. Well, I got them all cut, but you can see some of these are uh, are okay, <clears throat> but other ones have burn marks on there and a little bit of saw marks. I was using a thin blade. Uh, it's, it's a relatively new blade. It's sharp, but it has a tendency to burn. I'm not really sure why. I, I won't buy that brand of blade again. <clears throat> it's a Japanese brand. And anyway, so i got to get all these marks off of here. Now, I could run them through the planer, uh, but I don't like running small stuff like this, thin, skinny stuff through the, the planer. That it's too much, too much power, too much chance for it to chip out or or you know do this so I can lay them all out flat and use an orbital sander you know the hand sander and try and do it that probably would work but that's a little time consuming but I have a drum sander and I'm going to run these through the drum sander and uh, that works kind of like the <clears throat> kind of like the planer right but we had the the planers got the cutter that's going around this way and there are two rollers that are pushing down. And then there's a, the table, and you run your your board in through there. And uh, these rollers on the planer, these rollers are powered to have a, a consistent feed through there. Well, the drum sander works the same way, except that this is this is sandpaper instead of cutters, and it's still going around that same way. And there's still two rollers, except those two rollers aren't powered. Uh, instead, it has a roller here and a roller here and a belt that goes around. Uh, and, and you just set your, your board on there and it goes through there. But you can control the speed of this uh, belt <clears throat> so you can change your feed rate. And the, the sander, the drum sander is not going to take a lot of material off. I mean, you could put in a really coarse sandpaper, like 60 grit, and maybe get a sixteenth of an inch. But my guess is it would still burn. So you want to take just a little bit off at a time. And you want that feed rate to be slow enough that you're, you're cutting without burning. Uh, so that's what you've got that extra so. <clears throat> But I'll take just enough off to, to get rid of those marks. Uh, and so that's it's a little more finesse with the sander than it would be with the, uh, the, the planer. And then they'll all be consistent thickness in the end. So time to go do that. All right, we got them all sanded. See, they all look pretty good. Uh, and they're just uh, just a hair over three-eighths thick. Uh, and what I've done here is I just kind of laid it out loose, just kind of get an idea of what looks good as far as the spacing goes. And it's somewhere between a half inch and a five-eighths. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I need a way to secure these. Uh, I could put screws in. They would have to be uh, like stainless steel screws, something that doesn't rust or react to the uh, oak's got a lot of natural 
tan and it tends to turn things uh, steel black. Um, so what I think I might do is put a notch make a little one eighth of an inch deep notch for each one and then they'll so they'll fit in there and then that'll lock it into place and then I need something to keep it this way so I don't know I may put a I can put a dowel through there but if I go all the way through that kind of weakens it and then I've got the end grain sticking up for the water to soak in so what I may do is just put a little stub of a uh, a dowel that only goes uh, like an eighth of an inch up and that'll keep them locked in this way and they'll be locked in this way and then rely on the glue for the you know gravity is going to keep it down but we'll see I mean this isn't going to last forever outside uh, but hopefully we can have it last 10 or 15 years anyway um, so <clears throat> The next few steps, I'm going to find the shortest one. Of, I'm going to I'm going to sort these out into. Uh, I want all the straightest grain ones to be on the seat. Anything that's got a flaw in it, like this, this one's got a little bit of a little piece of the knot in there. I'll put that toward the back, but on on the the back. Uh, so any piece like that, I had a, had a couple that. You know had the knots in it that, that aren't usable for the for this so I'll pick out the best ones I cut them all to length I'll find the shortest one and cut them all to that same length and that'll determine the, the width of our uh, swing then I have to lay out on the blank the the notches I'll do that on the template and then uh, then we'll transfer it to these. Maybe gang them all four together and cut the slots. That might make sense. But like I said, I'm kind of figuring this out as I go. Um, haven't done this before. I like doing projects that, you know, involve something different or something new that I've not done before. So we'll, uh, we'll come up with a way to cut this. So right now we're going to make these all the same length, sort them, and make my pattern so I know how many on both the seat and the back templates and uh, we'll be ready.